evening is falling in the Tyrol region in Austria. We're in the Alpine Meadows above the city of Innsbruck on the Pacherhof Colt, which was the 76 Winter Olympic Mountain. We're at the, start, the racing track of Eagles ready for the second run of our former Anne Bobsleigh World Cup competition. Hello, everybody. I'm Martin Haven. Alongside me in the booth is John Morgan as we get ready to get the fastest 20 down this mountain. And John, a very tight group after heat one. Yeah, the German Thomas Vorschutz, fifth best start time, and he's the oldest of the three German pilots, and he's trying to uh, get rid of these two young nemesis of the Germans that have been finishing ahead of him. He posts the best time for the Germans, puts himself in a medal position, only a hundredth out of the third place spot. So Florschutz is in position to win his first medal in a couple weeks. And then cast it off from Russia, the top Russian, very surprised here. 12th best start. Not a very good start, but cast it off. My dark horse at the Olympic Games shows great talent, which he has in four men. Not any talent in the two men, but he comes down 100th better than Florschutz. And uh, he's in the medal position where he's been before, but now Oscar's Mel Bardis. Yeah, he won the race last week in Samaritz, Switzerland. He won the pre-Olympic test. He's 23 years old. He is really emerging as a great four-man pilot, but he lost the first run by a hundredth of a second, knocked him out of that 100,000 euro prize. He had unbelievable starts. Hey, surprise, Steve Holcomb. He won the two-man event last night. Thomas Sevich, Langton, and Foda, their night train slant. He went off fourth, won the two man. He's trying to double up like he did in North America for three straight races. Had posted the best time on the bottom, but only a hundredth of a second over Melbardis. What a race we got coming up. And lots of Latvian flags being waved. Lots of Latvian fans here. They've already seen Martin Stukur successful in men's skeleton. Will they see Oscars Melbardis successful as they did last week in the four-man bobsleigh competition? Hundredth of a second between the first two. But anybody in the top ten realistically could be in the medals here. And one of the big stories, Nick Cunningham of the USA in fifth position, really needs a solid second run to seal himself into the second US spot for four-man bobsleigh. Yeah, Corey Butner and him are racing off. Today's race determines who is the second four-man team at the Olympic Games in Sochi. A lot of pressure on both those athletes. We got a lot of races within a race. Olympic qualifying, Olympic selection, National Olympic Committee announcements. Everybody starts naming their Olympic teams the next couple days. A lot of pressure on all these athletes. There's Jamie Grubel right there. She just won the women's race. She did indeed. First ever World Cup race. 12, 20 sleds from the first heat go through. The fastest 20 into heat two. Both runs are counted together. The least elapsed time will designate our winner. John Jackson of Great Britain will be first man on the ice. Teammate Lamin Dean, 13th place after the first heat with Jacko's pushing crew. The GB team are desperate to qualify that second four-man sled to go to Sochi in Russia. John Jackson of Great Britain with the Team Dean break team behind him. John Baines, Ben Simons and Craig Pickering from a 100-metre sprinter. And John Jackson sacrificing his start for the favour of his teammate Lamin Dean. Amazing story here that the other British team and John Jackson were both up in St. Moritz. They were racing in the morning, driving two hours, coming down here and racing in the afternoon the last couple of days just to get qualification and points. Everything! Come on! Again, Jackson's giving up his top three athletes to his teammate, so his teammate gets a chance to get into the game. And the British, I don't think they're going to have a two-man bobsled in the games. That's not entirely certain yet. It depends who takes up their full allocation and who doesn't. And Jackson's. Uh, Achilles tendon tear in July is really what put the two-man sled on the back burner because when the driver can barely walk, it makes it very hard for the great man to make them competitive. He's been a great year, though. He had a little drift there out of that curve, six and seven. But he won a silver medal in Lake Placid of the four-man competition. I'll tell you, if there's a red badge of honor that you give out, you give it to John Jackson. That's not very good there. But uh, for, to have your Achilles, 10 and tear in July and be competing in a sport where you got to sprint. 
lot of mind over matter. Give John Jackson a lot of credit. A lot of grit in the Royal Marine Commandos. 51-78, exactly to the 100, the same as his first run. He can't drop out of the top 20. All he could do there is lay it on the line and see if they could find a bit more pace. Well, we talk about the lines, the bottom part of the track, 8-9. Pivotal part of the track, this curve 9. This is going to set you up for the bottom where you want all the speed. Got a drift going. Look at the helmets. A lot of bouncing around back there, but he's got that four-man sled and a drift. You don't want to do that. Jackson's regular four-man sled, but the crew aren't used to riding it. It's different from their regular ride. Jan Verber of the Czech Republic was a tenth of a second in front of John Jackson of Great Britain from the first heat. Dominic Dvorak, Dominic Sushi, and Michal Vacek are the crew of this Czech sled. Verber now increasing in experience, 31-year-old sports instructor. 5-12 in the first round. Let's see if this start tracks get quicker. 5-11, so for them it is. I always point to the velocity here. Now let's, let's a little education here. Let's look at the left side of our screen, 50.8. If you're keeping track of things, that is an important step to keep track of. That, the start time's one thing, the velocity, especially in Innsbruck or Eagles, the track, everything is about your velocity where it's so slow up here. 90.0 is another thing to keep track of. Green numbers, he's in the lead. Quicker than Jackson. By a lot. Over a third of a second. That is not good. There's a tenth gone. 104.9, barely any quicker than the British sled. That's how much speed he's lost. 126.8, that's a little quicker. So he remains comfortably in the lead. Down through the final corner, and then hard on the brakes. There's John Jackson and the team doing the brake man. Jackson, OK. Stop the sled. Yeah, a lot of problems. I saw the Zamboni. Believe it or not, they have a Zamboni in this part of the track to loosen up and firm up the finish area because so many sleds are having a problem breaking. It's pretty warm here. Here's nine. Look at the heads bouncing around. Now the exit of nine. Look at the runner tips. He drives it hard into the wall and he bounces off there. He doesn't come straight. He's still in a skid. Not good, but he's the leader. There is Jan Verber of the Czech Republic, and here is Simone Batazzo of Italy, the Italian team. The holes drilled in the starting bar there to allow them to put the weight lower in the sled. Simone suffers with the deficient start times. 22nd best start time in the first run. Improves by 100. 50.8 is what Vibra had, 50.6. The Bertazzo's a better driver. He's got more of a two-man resume than a four-man. Bronze medal in the two-man world championships in St. Moritz in 2007. And won a couple World Cups on his home track at Chisana, the Torino Olympic track, in two and four. But the last couple of years, he just hasn't been able to get a start. To him. Combined with his driving talent, and that's why he's back here in 17th or 18th place, but he's accelerating here. 128 is the best speed we've seen. Nice and clean down at the bottom. That might put him two tenths in front. It does. Wow. 51, 39 That's slides. Quicker. 1,600 is quicker, so the track. So he's holding up well here, despite the very warm temperatures, the rain, it's and raining all the sleds. Had a little bit of rain earlier. Down at the bottom part of the track, this is where the speeds are close to 80. Look at the heads, the violent transitions down on this three-corner labyrinth combination. Every track's got to have one. And look at the head and the energy here. Is it coming left? Is it coming right? Yeah, look at it. Tips, almost tips back to the other side. You want all that energy going forward, even at 79 miles an hour. Now nearly 60 sleds have been down this track this afternoon it is still holding up well as we get Lyndon Rush of Canada onto the ice Dave Bissett Neville Wright and Lascelles Brown are the brake men this is our third of three Canadian sleds Disappointing start in the first run, 508. 
these athletes are better than that. There's 504. That's, that'll get him into the top 10 at the start, probably. Speed, 51-2. That's great velocity for what you would expect out of Linda Brush, the bronze medalist from the 2010 Winter Olympic Games in Vancouver. And had a good weekend in San Moritz last weekend, a two-man. Sort of what, you know, it's about what you expect for Linda, but this is what you expect to be back here in this position. The four-man Bob Sutton and it's Eagles. Speed, impressive. Tanso was seven tenths of a kilometer an hour quicker. Linden Rush a full kilometer an hour down at the bottom. Is the gap going to close down into single digits? 1300s. Boy, he, uh, he beat, he beat Bertazzo by 1100s at the start and only 13 at the bottom. So not a good drive down. Boy, there's, the track's loosened up here in the finish area. You're going to see some real concerns about how they stop the sled. But here's how you start the sled. Everybody's got to hit it at the same time. The energy's got to come forward. Not a lot of head movement left or right. Lyndon Rush, the power step in. Watch his feet come in. He's got to get down. Look at this choreography on ice. Four huge men getting in a small bathtub. In and down quickly. Look at that mark. You want to get in before that red line. They were right on it. Lyndon Rush of Canada is our race leader as Nikita Zaharov of Russia gets ready to step up to the mark. 16th after the first heat, just 300s quicker than the Canadian who currently leads. So lots of athletes taped up at this end of the season. Sled all four at the same time, dry land trading. They got a 500 trips in the summer and fall. 510 start, 508 in the first run, 51 flat or so. Yep, there it is. So that's a little bit down for the Canadians. Canadians, Lyndon Rush, was 300s down. And that start deficiency right there is putting Zakharov 700s behind Rush. Lyndon Rush should be way ahead of Zakharov. So Zakharov has been coming on the Russian three sled. He's the guy that bumped the American three sled, the third sled out of the Olympics with his success in the last five World Cups. The American success has fallen off a number of crashes. So this is going to, Zakharov's not going to overcome Rush here, which Rush could move up a couple places. Fourth best time of the run. And the Russian and his team stay in the leader's box. Zaharov has a little bit of a wobbly run, drops a couple of spots down to third. But it is Lyndon Rush of Canada that leads after the first of our 20 sleds have gone down. Yeah. So Rush by 1300s, Potato of Italy in second, Zaharov of Russia in third. Top 15 sleds from the first heat still to come here in Innsbruck in Austria. Martin Haven, John Morgan watching the action. The seventh of eight four-man bobsleigh World Cup races of the season. This is Edwin van Kalka of the Netherlands. And he needs to stay in this position to try and guarantee that he will have a better start draw for the Olympic Games. Team is missing. Sebring Jasma, he's home, and there's questions whether or not he'll compete the rest of the year. But Van Cocker is trying to qualify into the Olympic Games. He's made it four man, but it's up to the Dutch Olympic Committee whether or not he goes in two man. And it just makes such natural sense to go in two man. He'll get 16 or so more trips in advance of the four man competition. And if they only limit him to four man, that, that takes away the opportunity to learn the track. And they're hoping that the Dutch Olympic Committee makes that makes that acceptance where he goes. But almost all his rivals will do the two-man race the previous week, and that leaves him with one hand tie behind his back for the four-man. 105 kilometers an hour, good speed, but a big skid. Oh, two away. He could catch him on the bottom. Vic Cocker, very experienced driver. A lot of 
Pressure. Oh, he falls. Hey. Hey. Third best time of the run. I thought we were done. You know, rush expect up to. Not a bad run for Van Cocker. The start time, he was 400 down. Second best start. Pretty good effort. And, you know, for a country that doesn't have a bobsled track, the amount of media following this guy around, boy, the Dutch have generated a lot of media for the sport of bobsledding in that lowland country. Here's the exit of nine. Look at this. Look at the runner tips here. Look at his, it's a six foot five guy in the cowling there, driving. Look how low he's, he sits in the sled. Little tap. Oh, he just missed by 400, so that's probably the mistake that cost him. And the Russian Canada, our leader from Edwin van Kalka. Next up, Lamin Dean, the Grenadier Guardsman from London. Stu Benson, Bruce Tasker, and Joel Fearon. They're the A-team from John Jackson's crew. They were just saying how different this sled feels to ride. Yeah, the British have loaded up all their horses onto Lamin Dean. It's Lamont's most important heat of his Olympic bobsled life. He needs this heat to have a chance to qualify into the Olympic Games. And there's, he's three or four hundreds ahead of three sleds, and there's four or five hundred separating him, and the next sled's coming down. So with that start, I mean, the second best start, 506, decent velocity. Tied with Justin Cripps of Canada in the first heat. He's just got to let this relax and happen for him. 90.2 kilometers now, good speed. 400. That's on line. Needs the good line here, though. It's not bad. 105 threes. Decent. Very good speed. This is on target now to produce what he this needs. 127.6. That's birth. good. And oh, this could be his late there. He's just got it under control wow. and he retains his place. Great strategy by the British to load up Lamont Dean with that team. And look, he knows. He's got a spot in the Olympic Games. What a moment. Talk about a busy weekend, John Morgan. Yeah, the start. Down here, watch the energy. Look, watch this sled here. He, he really, really seems late here in the exit of these corners. Right here, he gets in late. Now, watch the energy here on the Alba. Look how late he is there on 13. Watch the energy come back this way. Look at this sled almost tipped over to the right side of the screen. But Lamont. Yeah. Hey, Congratulations, dude. Guys. Thank you. Well done. There's Craig, his regular brakeman, Craig Pickering, all his crew down there to help. And having Jacko's boys on the back gave him the start he needed. And that has allowed him to take the result. Tied for 13th place with our current leader, Lamin Dean of Great Britain, after one of the two heats here in, Ca in Canada, in Austria, was Canada's Justin Cripps. His personal best achieved yesterday in the two-man bobsled here. Fifth place, Justin Cripps, breakman at the 2010 Games. 503 start, that's 300s better. Big start. 51.5 or so. 51, that's not very good velocity for the start they just had. I keep emphasizing that. That's the way you enter the sled and get around the first curve. All that energy, if you're going side to side, it takes away the speed or the velocity on this track. In front of Lamin Dean, that's all from the start. 90.3, same speed as the British sled. Dean wasn't smooth at the bottom. Chris, the driver, is coming into his own. That's a great line. 104.9, a little slower than the Brits, but they were rocking down here. Hunter. Doesn't have the speed, so the Brits could get one more. This would be big celebration in the, lead, in the box here. Could come back. He does have 300s. Bonus. Yes. Bonus. bonus. A Brucey bonus. And Tom Delahunty's only Canadian got a coach. smile. He's smiling on both sides because he's Brit. Yeah, former British athlete and coach. 300s of a second. Well, down below, he lost his time down here on the speed part of the track, 78.9 miles an hour. The British sled at 79. Good lines here, but 
Well, what is crucial is that Cripps finishes in front of Lyndon Rush, and that will maintain his position above Rush, the bronze medalist in Vancouver in the World Cup rankings. He may go, Rush may stay at home, unless there are three Canadian sleds. Chris Spring is the number one Canadian in two and four man, and he will lead their team in Sochi. I think the Canadians have got three sleds in the games already. Yeah. It's Germans, Canadians, and Russians. There's the leaders who just, Lamont they just, just got into the Olympic Games. What a, what a thrill that must be. What a, what a buzz. Precision of a four-man start. Look how quickly they're in. Down. Look at the Canadians. Genius so start. precise Five at that. Flat. Best start so far. Well, their Three hundreds better than their first run. Their teammates just matched their first round start. So you know Great. that Cody Sorensen, Jesse Lumsden, and Ben Kirkwell have wanted to have gone better, and they did. Great velocity too. Amazing to see four guys run like that across the ice and get in and get down so quick, so precise. And on this track, that start is everything. And now the drive down, 17 to 1900. Look at the runner tips here. What about Couple it? Couple taps. Rattley. Speeds. Good speed, 105-1. Only Lamindeen was quicker, 127-2. Lamindeen was quicker than that as well, but Should he's still enough. in the lead. He'll take the lead from Lamindeen with wow, a new the track, track record. Wow. wow, he did use the Austrian shortcut. Really? 51-13, that is, he's 3,400s better in the second run. Wow. He, he really used a shortcut down at the bottom. He tapped twice too. Out of nine here, watch it, watch the line. Look him come down a little bit now. Now watch him hit the here, and then go over and hit the left wall. Maybe that's the line to hit twice. <laughs> he's the first guy to hit there twice. Oh, hey, Chris. I knew I had it in me. The beards. There we go. Hey, the beards. It is Woo. the beards. The hair bear bunch do it again. Nice job. Boom, boom. Jesse Lumsden, there's a story. Corey Butner, Chuck Barkley, Adam Clark, and Chris Langton have seen the bar raised again. What can Team USA do? This is for a spot in the Olympic Games. They're 1100 down to their teammate. Nick Cunningham goes up at five sleds. 5.04 in the start, the first run. 5.05, they go slow. Canadians just had 51.5 velocity. Americans 50.9, that's a half kilometer plus down on the velocity, and that's gonna have a lot. Corey Butner's gonna have all he could do here to maintain this position, because the sleds in front of him are only three or four hundred, so wait, now he's two tenths down. Ooh, late there on the exit of Christ. He flew on the bottom part of the track. Ooh, oh, hard drive. 103.9 is decent speed. Very good. 125.9 is great, but he's way back. This is how many places he's got. Fall. Six positions. Wow. Eight places he drops. There we go, baby. Poor. Wow. That's a real shame real for shame Corey Butler and his team. And the Charles writing Berkeley. was probably on the wall, but I think that is going to seal well, it. No, no, no. It's Barring not over yet. Disasters. Yeah, Cutting I shouldn't say stuff still. like that has a lot to do to come down the track. And here's the real big mistake. Start wasn't that great, but look how late he is. He's almost airborne, the back runner out of Kreisel. And then out of nine, this is a hard drive into the wall. He's the 73rd sled down this track today. Can't imagine how much the conditions are changing. Chris Spring of Canada with a track record leads after the first half of our second run here in Innsbruck. Lamindine in second, Justin Cripps in third, and a disappointing run from Corey Butner. Oscars Kibermanis, 10th place after the first of our two heats here in Innsbruck in Austria. Martin Haven and John Morgan watching the penultimate World Cup race of the four man season. And the Barmy Army from Latvia are here in voice. 20 year old Kibermanis is going to be their new poster boy. Third best start in the first run, 501. What can they do here? 498 uh, for this 20-year-old. The average age in this team is probably 24. 
track speed, 51.4. They had a training camp in Latvia for athletes. They got in about 60 track and field athletes, turned them all down. Their standards are so high. Not very good velocity for that start, to be a couple hundreds ahead of Sprig and not have Sprig's velocity. Big skid. Eight hundreds in it. This could come down to one mistake, and that's a good exit. 104.6. These Latvian sleds can fly if you put them in the right direction. Down need, 10. Going to need a track record to win it. He's half a kilometer an hour down. Could fall a couple of places. No, oh, only one. Third best. <laughs> oh, there we go. Oh, oh, boy. Boy. <laughs> Are they loving life, that Canadian Ooh, look team? look at the back runner there, the brakes yeah. there. That's a pretty dangerous down here. Yeah, it really is. But this is 20-year-old guys, second, third best start times. Oh, just so impressed with this small Baltic nation. This is the skid, exit of Kreisel. Watch it, the back end of the sled here. Look him down the right side of the wall and he's got a big skid going. Watch this in the finish, now watch the back runner. Look at that up in the air. I'm telling you, there, there still could be somebody could tip over down here. It's a yeah. real soft ice. And it's Alexander really warm out. Well, there yeah. is. Take a look at that, Kelly. We're going to be seeing a lot of him. Yeah, we're going to hear a lot about this tiny. Talk yeah. about punching yeah. above your weight as a nation. Blood and scratches, gore all over the crew of Alexander Zubkov. That's what they put into this sport. The Russian lying ninth after the first heat. I predicted he was going to win the race by four tenths going away. Talked to the Russian media about it, told them all I saw what he was doing. And then I spoke to the coach afterwards, Pierre Luters at our hotel. He said, no, he doesn't have a good team makeup. I was surprised because he was so good in the two-man. He was so good in four-man training. His daughter competes in the Europa Cup tour in Skelter. It was her birthday on Friday. He drove all the way over to Birch's Garden to, to visit her. So relaxed. But you know, very perplexed. He's won this event before. Can't believe he's back in ninth place. Well, right now, he's just focusing on yeah, going home to Russia on just... Monday and sliding in Sochi until the end of the year. And they will not be in Berchtesgard Konixi next week for the World Cup final. They're going back to get a little practice time on that track. Fastest speed so... we've seen. Is he going to pull it out of the fire here? Last corner. He's going to find a tip, no. and he doesn't. Yeah, again. Springs again, track baby. record could see him move. Shall I say this now, or should we save it till later? I don't know. I gotta believe the track record's still there. Somebody to break. Last week, Kaylee Humphreys, 10 to 1. Spring started the day in 12th. Look at the end of the start here. With the runners. Look at the way they drift to the left here. Look at that, look at that. that. That is perplexing, very confusing that the, the most experienced guy in the field could do that. Alexander, I know what you're looking at. I know what you're focusing on. <laughs> He's packing his bags for Sochi. Ben Hefty of Switzerland, next man on the ice. Eighth place after the first heat. The race being led by Chris Spring of Canada and Alexander Zubkov of Russia in second spot. Ben Hefty of Switzerland, 5.02 in the first heat, 5.07 in the second heat. Everybody else getting better. He got worse. And boy, this velocity is way off. Really surprised. Second place in the two-man event last night to Holcomb. He likes that two-man more than the four-man. I think if he had a choice, he wouldn't even drive four-man. But uh, he won this event last year to two-man bobsled. Four-man bobsled, he, you know, usually the Swiss are good at both. He just seems to like the two-man full short sled. That now he's going to fall a number of places. Six spots back already, and hasn't got the speed to match the leaders. Ooh, Very the wild came up. at the bottom, yeah. You see that? The brakeman's head ah, came up. Ninth best time of the run. Keep it going, keep, keep it going. On, everybody back home. 
drops to just, seventh place. That's what it is. You know, they were going through the motions, didn't put the brakes on. Well, Thomas Amrain, I'm not sure he's raced on this track, certainly not in World Cup before. Watch his head come up here at the bottom. I mean, they had a bad start, no velocity. Watch his head come up. He's like it's, he thinks that the, he's like he's ready to put the brakes on here, right out of this 13. Watch the head come up here. He thinks it's time to put the brakes on. Well, he's, he's not looking, they, they just got thrown there. around, but he didn't break early enough. And that's going to cause a lot of damage to those runners. Well, they're going to hold the track till they get them out of there. The crack won't be cleared yet. See, hold, hold, bring the sled back up, see the official. This is yeah. going to upset the lift German the sled. sled. There's they want to get the, the track sled off the ice. They don't like that. They need to lift the sled off the ice because it the will cool groups. the runners down. And that's, this, this, they're still... Okay, it's only going to be a few seconds, but Max Arns and his team will be standing there, stripped to their skiddies for a, a minute longer than they need. All right, it's plus eight, but it's not exactly plus 18 degrees. Yeah, I really think the brakeman got lost there. That is Francesco Friedrich and his team, isn't it? Yeah, the brakeman just didn't get the timing right and didn't get the braking right. So the Germans were a little off their routine. Francesco Friedrich, our two-man world champion with Janis Becker, Gregor Birnbach, and Torsten Margis. Good four-man pilot, he's the junior world champion as well. 5.02 in the first run. 5.02 in the second run. 51.4, 51.5, he hit good velocity though. He was first man down the track, 51.2. I don't like that velocity. I mean, if, you know, for what the start is, he's already behind Chris Spring. Wow! I mean, is the track just the speed at the track at the start just falling away? Chris Spring, he doesn't get this right here. Plus eight, falling away more than Chris Spring. Well, Francesco Friedrich was six spots higher, but only nine hundredths of a second faster than Spring in the first heat, and that skid, he's got nowhere to go Coming from back, here. But I think he's going to run out of track. I think this is Chris Spring in another position up. Spring was 127 at the bottom. He's got the fastest Yo, speeds in the go. last two traps. There we go! Oh, man! Oh, boy. These Canadians are writing some stories the last couple of weeks. Friedrich slips to third. Yeah, the little scrape here, you know, but they didn't have any kind of velocity to start, but then this mistake down here compounded the effort even more. And the Germans. Chris Spring of Canada, our race leader. Alexander Zubko, Francesco Friedrich, both dropping behind him. Last six sleds in the race here in Innsbruck in Austria. Four-man world champion Max Arndt is on the ice with Marco Hubenbecker, Alex Rödinger and Martin Putzer. There's your race leaders. The Beards. The Bearded Wonders, Team Chris Spring leading this race. Look at the look down the track. John Morgan, this sled was six spots, but only 1100s quicker than spring in the first heat. Only the 14th best start time, 508. They should improve. They need to improve. 506. Now they had 51.4 start velocity. They got to match that, or is it the track? 51-2. Spring and his team, 51-5 yeah. off a five yeah. flat start. And now he's even with Spring. And I mean, this is the present world champion. This is the guy who's probably got the best eyes and hands, I think, of anybody. You know, the Zukov, and he makes a mistake there in six to seven. And that's not clean. Speed is down on the Canadians. Spring 105-1 here. That's A plus there and the best speed. So this is what he does. You give him a little speed and here he pulls away. Same speed as the Canadians at the bottom. He could be the one to take the lead away from Chris Spring. Oh, but he is in time. This story continues. Nine of a yard. I'm afraid that is the way it is. He they don't does realize lead. they're tied yet. They, 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 the coaches are saying one. They don't care if they're tired as long as they're leading. Boy, the speed of the bottom. Look, oh, look at that number two, man. The helmet was way out. Yeah, rocking way and rolling. Rocking way outside. This is, you know, A 
80, close to 80 miles an hour speed on the bottom part of the track. And Art lost a couple hundreds, Max. I think they are scrambling at the bottom. They are whipping through that labyrinth so fast. Tied now are leaders as Nick Cunningham for the USA comes to the ice. Fifth after the first of our two heats with Justin Olsen, Johnny Quinn and Dallas Robinson. And Cunningham has got to put out of his mind the fact that one good trip here puts him in the Olympic team. Driving the night train one sled, the one the Olympic gold medal. But they need to finish ahead of their teammates at the bottom to get a spot into the Olympic Games. Cunningham had the five flat start in the first run, tied their teammates for the second best start. See what they do here. Five flat again. Now their velocity should be 51, four, five, because everything's been weird up there. 51, five, that's good. But Cunningham, it was in third last week at St. Moritz in the first run and crashed in the second run or else he would have been automatically on the Olympic team. So this is Nick Cunningham's. And his teammates, and his teammates. To 50 seconds. Good lines. 10, down a nine though. Needs to be perfect here. He doesn't have to be the leader. He just has to get to the finish line faster than Corey Butler. 105 kilometers an hour. It's going to be very close. Going to be a lot of celebration here by this team. Not only does he get a spot in the Olympic team, but he guarantees himself a top five finish. Great oh, run. They don't have the brakes on. Real Watch pressure. Out. And Cunningham responded in the best way possible. Wow. Cunningham delivered the goods there. Give him credit. He was so upset with himself last week when he crashed in the second run in St. Moritz when he was going for a medal and a spot in the Olympic team. Now down here, eight, nine combination. Look at the runner tips here. This is, you know, a little tap, and he let it come straight. Second best time of the run. Didn't match cutting it, but look at the celebration here. This is Johnny Quinn, big smile on his face, and you know Dallas the others. Robinson. Their smiles are splitting those helmets. There's D Rock. Robinson. Should we let him buy dinner tonight? Yeah. Maybe. What a road he's had. What yeah. a 60 meter track and field sprinter. Well, the race continues. Thomas Florschutz of Germany, the senior citizen of the German squad, fourth after the first heat. So, 502, the first run. And these Germans are trying to emerge as Germany won today. Florschutz has been in the back seat to the other two younger Germans. 503, they didn't get better. So, 54, they had good velocity on the first run. 51.5, good velocity again with a subpar start. Well, with the size of his crew, you know they're pushing the lightest possible sled they can. Yeah. Maximum weight, minimum weight of the sled, though, also. Plus three, minus three now. Florschutz, good lines at the bottom with his FES sled. Perfect line out of Kreisel. He's accelerating away. He's trying to emerge as the German one sled. He's the veteran. Silver medalist in Vancouver and two man bobsled, but he's taking a back seat to these two young German pilots. He's going to be the leader. He's putting them back in their box here today. He'll take the lead with three Track to go. Record. He ties Chris Springs' track record. He doesn't beat it, but he ties the 51 1 3 of Canada's Chris Spring. I don't, I think it's the first time this year Florschutz has beat Max Art and the other emerged yeah. as Germany won in a race. Florschutz has had two bronze medals. That's it. But he hasn't beat Art till nope. today. Not till now. Good lines in the bottom. Great aerodynamic profile. Those four huge men tucked in there perfectly. Little skid down there in the bottom, but. You know, track record. Thomas, you gotta be happy with yourself. 35 years old, father of one. And still got it going on. Final three sleds on the ice here in Innsbruck in Austria. Thomas Florschitz of Germany, the leader. Alexander Kazyanov, the best place Russian looking to hang on to a medal here. This will be his second medal of the season if he can stay on the podium. The worst 
start time of the top five sleds in the first run. 5.07, he's gonna have to match that. 5.05, they got better. Velocity gonna be important. He drove well, but he's got a deficiency to overcome at the start. 51.2, that's three, four tenths of a kilometer down to the American sled or the Russian sled. Plus seven now to Florschitz. And with Florschitz was clean, so Kasanov, by Dark Horse at the Olympic Games in four-man bobsled because he really has once in a while some great two eats in a day, but this is plus nine now. It's drifting away, and this is leaving. Ooh, good Thomas speed, though. Thomas in with a chance of a medal. This is for a bronze medal at least, plus ten. No better than Florschutz. Slower at the last speed gun. He's not going to pull him in. Fourth, and that puts Cunningham in fourth place. No worse than fourth. Florschutz now guaranteed a bronze medal. Kasanov falls off. And the Russians... This is the last Russian sled we're going to see till Sochi, because they won't... Be, well, there'll be a B team we'll see next week yep. in, in Koenigsegg. But here's the 8-9 combination. The crossover into nine, the pivotal part of the track. He's trying to hit a mark, just like you were driving a NASCAR. And now, look at the runner tips. He comes off there clean, but he's got a little skid going. Oh, we got a big roar outside our booth. There's Kassinov. Kassinov. Yeah. I got to pronounce that right. I'll look at the roar. This is why we got a roar outside yeah. our booth. The Latvian fans cheering for Oskars Melbardis, Damis Dreskins, Arvis Vilkasta, and Janis Stranga. The winners last week in Samaritz. <laughs> and Oskars Melbardis, just 25 years old. What a standout athlete he is. What a driver he's turning into. A brake man in Vancouver, John Morgan. He could be a medalist as a driver in Sochi. broke the track record, which is 493. They own it. They could do it here. 494 again. Unbelievable speed. He's only got a hundred. He's only a hundred behind Hulk. He's not worried, I think, about floor shifts. He wants to win for two consecutive weeks. He was in position to win that triple trophy, which was the 100,000 euro prize, but he lost to Holcomb by that hundred, so that knocks him out of that competition. Look at this huge lead, 2,500s. Well, that's impressive because Thomas Florschutz, who is our current leader, was only 1,500s back after the He's first heat. Good lines. He won last week at St. Moritz. The biggest, fastest athletes in the United States are in the NFL. The biggest, fastest athletes in Latvia are bobsled. And this oh, a new track record by a big margin. Boy, put some pressure on Holcomb. <laughs> look at Yanni. Look at Yanni. This Bruce is the he coach. Now owns 23 year old. The average. Oh, and they're going to run off the end of the ramp. Yeah, this might be strategy, too, though. They're going to, well, they might delay Holcomb, but they're going to do a lot of damage to those runners. I don't think that was strategy by the brake man. He's getting more comfortable in the four man than the two man. Listen to the crowd. Good lines. I mean, the guy's 6'4", 255 pounds driving that sled. He looks like he's sitting in there. Country of 2.5 million people. And they're a superpower in the sliding sports. And they're taking the time. It's called, let's make those Americans wait up there. <laughs> well, I don't think that this will phase Steve Holker much. He had a big win here yesterday, his first win in Europe in two-man since February 2007. And a four-man Olympic champion. He's already proved in Vancouver and since that he can handle pressure. That much we know. But is that enough? for Oscars Melbardis of Latvia to take his second four-man win in two weeks. Or can Holcomb make it a double race-winning weekend here in Austria? Five on one in the start. They had a 700s deficit to the Latvians. Oh, they know when they need it. Kurt 
Tomasiewicz watched Holcomb win yesterday alongside me in the booth. Steve Langton and Chris Vogt on the sled. That's not very good velocity for that start. It's a little and less than a down now to Mel Barnes. 800s of a second and a kilometer to get it back. Got a 10. He's got to stop the bleed. He's got Slower a chance. Than the Latvians. He's got a chance at the bottom if he's perfect. Got 11. Latvia had 105.2. Holcomb 105 flat. Not, the not good speed. Low. Can he find the gold in the bottom good. corner? He's a little quicker, but he's got to be really exceptional in the last turn. Holcomb is in second place. Melbarnis makes it two in two weeks in the four-man competition. Wow. Steve Holcomb, two-man race winner yesterday, silver medalist here today, as the Latvians once more rise to the top. There was a hundredth of a second in it in the first heat, and Malbardis found an extra tenth to keep the crowd happy in the second. Well, Kurt Thomas Savage there at the far end of the shot was watching victory of Holcomb and Langton yesterday alongside me in the FIBT TV booth. Today, he's in the silver medal position as Oscars Melbardis and his team from Latvia once more claim a four-man gold medal. Victory in Samaritz, victory in Eagles. Two very close but very different tracks. Totally different in nature, in length, and in demand. And Melbardis, with his new racing haircut, has conquered them both. Steve Holcomb takes the silver medal after one, two in the women's bob for the USA today. Thomas Florschutz takes the bronze. Fourth place for Nick Cunningham. A massive result when he needed it most. Way ahead of his best results so far of the season. Alexander Kazyanov and Max Arndt ahead of Chris Spring, who rose from 12th to 7th after a great second drive. Well, 20th place for John Jackson's great uh, of Great Britain. He took one for the team, and teammate Lamin Dean did not let him down. Jacko and Lamin both did two-man and four-man races in Samritz this weekend, as well as racing two, in Jackson's case, and four-man here for the pair of them. And Lamin Dean, 11th place in a World Cup race. And I think that is comfortably his best ever World Cup result as well. With Jacko's crew behind him, he stepped up and performed as he needed to. And from 13th in heat one to 11th in heat two, ahead of Justin Cripps and Lyndon Rush of Canada. So another big day for Latvia. Last Sunday in Samaritz, they won the men's skeleton with Martin Stukos and the four-man bobsled. Stukos won <laughs> yesterday. And the four-man team, Alvaro Streiskins, Kasta and Strenger winning here today. And that brings the end to the sliding action here. We will stay in Innsbruck to hear from our top three in just a moment. And don't forget, next weekend, the final World Cup encounter of this Olympic season. Koenigsee in Bavaria, the oldest artificial ice track on the planet and still one of the most challenging. Built just outside the town of Berchtesgaden, one of the heartlands of winter sliding. As we so, so often, it's not actually in Germany. Oh, no, it's in Bavaria, and that's a very different thing. They love their sliding there and always put on a great show and a great welcome for the World Cup teams. Let's get back then and join our top three. Max Arndt of Germany is our World Cup points leader still. Alexander Zubkov remains in second place. And Stephen Holcomb closes right on the Russian. Look at that. There is three points from second to third. Chris Spring is coming up fast on the rails. Thomas Florschutz moves up into fourth place from fifth at the expense of Russia's Alexander Kazyanov. In fact, it's Francesco Friedrich, who is the big loser. He drops down into eighth position with a disappointing run here into, what was it, ninth position for the junior four-man world champion. 
further down the order, Nick Cunningham, further distances himself in World Cup points from Corey Butner. John Jackson is in 12th behind Baird Hefty and Lamin Dean doing himself no disfavour with an 11th place finish here, really bumping up the points tally to try and get that second sled in the four-man Olympic competition for Team Great Britain. Oscar Melbardis winning again here. Second straight victory of the season. Disqualified in Calgary. What a horrible start to a season. Four, fifth, sixth. And then the awful 23rd result in Winterberg in Germany. Since then, he has gone gold for the last two weeks. Well, they are ready below the crowd, right outside a commentary position to present the flowers. It is a little bit like trying to nail Jello to the ceiling, organising 12 beefy men, all of whom want to get warmed up. Third place in the Yellow Jackets, Thomas Florschutz and the team from Germany. And not only bronze medalists, but the best German four-man team here. In second place after winning yesterday, his first time ever in Eagles. In victory lane at the top of the podium for Steve Holcomb, his first two-man win in Europe since February 2007. 2007, that was not even after Vancouver, that was after Torino. And our race winners, the V sign there from Damas Driskins. And the new, improved Oscars Melbardis haircut has brought him two gold medals in as many weekends. <laughs> Handing out the flowers. Arvis Vilkaste, Janis Stranger, and Oscars Melbardis. And there are the race winners. A great start from Oscars Melbardis. Two 494 getaways for his crew. A hundredth away from their start record, but they now also own the track record. Steve Holcomb's team set it in the first heat. Chris Spring beat it in the second heat. And Oscars Melbardis wiped it away in the third. Start and track record to the team from Latvia and gold medal as well. well. Loads of fans down in the finishing area and milling in amongst them is John Morgan. Let's hear from our top three. Thomas Florschutz, bronze medal. You're, you beat the rest of the German team. You must be happy today. Yeah, we are very happy. It was a gelungen Wettkampf. Good start, good Fahrten. Podiumsplatzierung. Wir sind sehr zufrieden. Wir sind auf einem guten Weg nach Sochi. Ja, er ist sehr happy. Good starts, good finish, and he's a good preparation for Sochi. Congratulations. Now over to Team Stephen Holcomb in the night train. Stephen, uh, not so good of a start to the European campaign, but last night and tonight you uh, got to be feeling pretty good about things. Yeah, you know things are starting to come together. We really uh, had two great starts tonight. Um, we've been testing some stuff over the past few weeks to see if we can get faster, and and I think we're starting to, to learn a lot and really make this thing fly. So I'm looking forward to next week, and then uh, obviously in Sochi. The team gave you a great second start. But congratulations. Now uh, two weeks in a row, uh, Team Malbardis, you missed the triple trophy by one hundredth. 100,000, but two gold medals. You must be happy. Yeah, we are very proud of the medal. We are not aware of it. Katra Ziņa, thanks for the technical set. And thanks to all the sponsors, 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 the sponsors. He's very happy about everything. He thanks his sponsors for his support. I think it's the hair. But you know what? I'm not entirely sure it's not the hair. Oscars Malbardis, though, has produced another gold medal winning run. Last week in Samaritz, this week in Austria. One more World Cup race still to come in Koenigsee and Bavaria. Can the man who won the Olympic tryout event make it three gold medals on the trot heading to Sochi 2014? Whether he does or doesn't, he'll still be among our favourites. Thanks for being with us. Thanks to John Morgan, to the FIBT TV crew. On behalf of everybody here in Austria, it's Martin Haven saying goodbye for now. We'll see you in Bavaria next week. <laughs>